the makings of salad niçoise, meaning the way they make it in Nice, on the Mediterranean. This is the great big open market in Nice. It's an absolutely marvelous place and it stretches for about a mile and a half along the outside of the old city called La Vieille Ville. And it's just beyond La Place Gambetta. And everybody comes here from all over the area. Marvelous people. And they start at six o'clock in the morning and they go full tilt until 12.30 and by one o'clock everything's washed up, cleaned up and it's turned into a parking lot. You'd never know it had been a market. You can get everything here that you could possibly use for the makings of a great salad. We're making Salad Niçoise today on The French Chef. The French Chef is made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Welcome to The French Chef. I'm Julia Child. We're going to make Salade Niçoise. I think this is one of the most famous of the composed salads, just because it happens to be an awfully good composition or combination that everyone likes. It has put potatoes, French potato salad, and it has tomatoes and hard-boiled eggs and anchovies and tuna fish and capers and olives and string beans and lettuce. And the marvelous thing about it is that you can make it all ahead in sections. And you can use it as a first course, but I think it just makes a marvelous lunch because you have everything you could possibly need, and it's nourishing and beautiful and very good to eat. And the first thing we have to have, because it is a salad, is a dressing, a French dressing. And that doesn't mean something red that comes in a bottle, but something that's made by hand. And because it's a salad niçoise, I'm gonna put a big piece of garlic in it using a new Swiss garlic press. You can, of course, leave out the garlic, but I think that's too bad to do. And I like this press because it's very easy to clean out. You can see, you can just scrape it all out when you're done. And then this is a patent system, sort of my own invention, but I think it's a very good one, of making a very fine puree of the garlic with a little bit of salt. I put about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in there. And then a little bit of wine vinegar, then a little bit of lemon juice just to wash it all around. And then it's going to go into a larger, a larger affair and turn into a dressing. If I can get it all in here nicely, that's a slightly bigger thing. Sometimes I make this in a screw top jar, which works out very nicely. And now we want to have a little bit of dry mustard, about half a teaspoon. I'm gonna make about half a cup. I'm not exactly sure, it'll depend on how things turn out. A little pepper, fresh pepper. And we have a little bit of lemon juice, and I'll put in a little bit more. And a little more vinegar, but not too much, because you can always add a little vinegar at the end, and then beat this all up. And I'm gonna start in with about half a cup of the very, very best olive oil, beating all the while. And the proportions of a, this is called a vinaigrette. And the proportions, I think very often you see them as one vinegar, lemon juice, two, three of oil, but I think that just makes much too strong a taste of vinegar, because if you have too much vinegar, then you, that spoils the wine, and you don't want that to happen. That's very nice, of course, the garlic's awfully good with it. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of basil, if you have fresh basil, that would be nice too. But the very important thing in any French dressing that you have the best oil and the best vinegar, and then you can make a very simple dressing just like this. And then the next thing in this salad is going to be French potato salad, which is called pomme à l'huile, or 
potatoes with an oil dressing. And that means that the dust, they're not covered with mayonnaise. You can't put mayonnaise on afterwards, but pomme à l'huile is just potatoes with a very good vinaigrette. And I think the eternal problem with making a potato salad is to get potatoes that will hold together after you've cooked them and keep their shape. And I've been doing some research on potatoes, and I find that they're very difficult. If not even a very neurotic vegetable. You never know how they're going to turn out. And even the people who grow them don't know how because they'll be one way in one piece of property and another in another. And you just have to trust that your market knows what they've bought and that they have bought a boiling potato. And this one is a boiling potato, so it said, or all purpose. And I have found in this problems that using a steamer is, and steaming them in their jackets like this seems to work out quite well because they do seem to hold their shape fairly well when they're steamed. And that's how it looks. And it has holes in it. And you can use, you can use a colander or a sieve or whatever you like. But you just set the steamer over boiling water and put a cover on it. And I found with these sort of medium-sized potatoes, they took about 20 minutes. So then you poke a knife into them when they're done. And I think it's, you can use, you can buy a vegetable steamer, just ask for one. And it certainly was great fun shopping for salad niçoise in Nice itself. And the thing to do is to go in the very early morning when everything is at its very freshest, including the potatoes. This is very early morning. Bonjour. ce que nous allons faire, c'est la salade niçoise. La salade niçoise, c'est ce que je vous ai dit. Et vous avez dit que voilà. ces pommes de terre sont, sont les meilleures. Oui, euh, parce qu'elles ne qu qu éclatent pas, pas la cuisson. Elles tiennent la cuisson. Elles tiennent la cuisson. Tout en dit, pommes de terre à chair jaune. Oui, madame. C'est ça ce que oui. je veux dire. Eh bien, j'aurai euh, une livre. Oui, madame. Très bien. Vous les voulez grosses ou petites On les plutôt les grosses. Grosses. Alors, une Voilà, 10. C'est suffisant comme ça Oui, c'est suffisant, c'est simplement voilà. pour voilà. une petite quantité. Oui, là, vous voyez, vous pouvez déjà ouais. faire votre salade niçoise. Oui, il vous manque les tomates, oui, les il tomates. vous manque les anchois, il vous manque le thon, oui, les œufs oui, durs. Oui, oui, j'ai oui. les poivrons. Ça, c'est bon, vous savez. Ça, c'est très bon. Ah, oui. Les cébettes. Et là Ça, c'est des cébettes, vous voyez oui. ça. C'est ah, des oui. oignons frais. Ah, ça. Ce sont les. Ça c'est de l'ail frais. Non, oignon. Oignon frais. Mais vous mangez ça cru. Oui. C'est bon. Ça fait combien Surtout monsieur? avec de l'huile d'olive. Ah, hein. Oui, jamais l'huile d'olive. Oui. Mais pas d'arachide. Hein. Bonne huile d'olive du oui. pays. Oui. Ça, voilà. Ça fait combien 95. 95. Merci. Voilà. Merci bien, madame. Merci à vous, monsieur. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Bonne continuation. Bonne continuation. That means have. Have a, have a good time the rest of the day. I bought red potatoes, red skin potatoes, but these ones, these old purpose ones, seem to slice up very nicely. The important thing in making the pomme à l'huile is to slice them while they're still warm and to season them while they're still warm too, and then the dressing goes into them. So here they go into the bowl, and they have kept their shape reasonably well. I'm going to treat them very gently. In France, they often speak of potatoes with chair jaune, which means with yellow flesh. And that, they're, they're supposed to hold together, but I'm not sure that they do any better. And these are going to have a little bit of onion or shallot flavoring. I'm going to put in some shallot, or you could put scallions in. Just chop them up. I think you could have potato salad without a little scallion and or shallot in. 
And then they should have a little bit of salt and pepper, because having steamed them, they didn't have any, any, any seasoning at all. And there's your little bit of pepper. And then, this is a typical of this, you should have a little tiny bit of white wine or chicken stock, about two or three tablespoons. And then a little bit of water, because you want to dilute the wine a little bit. And the reason for this is that you want the potatoes to absorb a little bit of liquid so that they won't absorb so much oil. And then you very gently turn them around and let them sit for a while until they will absorb this little bit of, this little bit of liquid. And while they're doing that, we've got to have some lettuce. So I shall go over to where the lettuce lives. And this would have a nice big fresh green head of Boston lettuce, which in Boston, of course, they call native lettuce. And wash it off in a big sink, in a big sink full of cold water. And then you can shake it up and down like that in a colander to dry it. You've got to get off the excess water. Or you can use, this is a, a French solid basket. They used to have the kind you just had to swing around like that, which was an awful nuisance. And this one has a twirly gig. And it goes round and round like that, and it gets the, and it works extremely well. I've already done it so that it wouldn't splatter all over me. The best thing to do is to do it in the sink, and then it doesn't splatter all over you. But we have an even better salad thing, I think, which is this Swiss model, which has a basket and a ratchet attachment, and it has a string, and you put your lattice in it, and then you pull the string, and it goes back and forth. You can see it's going one way, and then it goes the other way. And the great thing about this is that it, all the water stays inside here. And these are made by little old Swiss ladies in tennis shoes. And if you want to find it, you just have to go to Switzerland and look for those little old ladies. I have not seen one, unfortunately, yet imported into this country. And then, after you've gotten the excess water off the lettuce, it should be dry, it should be wrapped in a towel. My sister-in-law always puts hers in a pillowcase. I don't know whether it's a double or single pillowcase, but you want to wrap it up and not press it, because the towel will absorb the excess moisture. And then I think it's a very good idea to wash the lettuce and, and wrap it into the towel and put it in the refrigerator quite a bit of time ahead of when you're going to use it, about like about an hour, and then you're really sure that all the water is off. Now, salad niçoise is really, uh, you could say that it's a kind of an anti-pasto salad. Anti-pasto means before the pasta, and it comes from Italian. And Nice was part of Italy until 1860, and then Italy withdrew and Nice was left to her own, and antipasto really comes naturally to Nice because of the Italian past, and it means eggs and capers and anchovies and things like that. And at this wonderful big market in Nice, you can get absolutely everything you need, including the local salted anchovies, which have a really good flavor. <laughs> These are salted anchovies, are they? Me? Yes. How long will they keep in salt? Two weeks. Two weeks, sir. Ah. Yeah. Voilà. How much you want? Five. 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 Five fish. Cinq. Five fish. Hello, hello, little garde. Well, I see. Sont tous sont sel, très bien. Merci. There, there are our five anchovies, and these are just the same type that we got in Nice. I got a whole bunch of them and keep them in a bowl, and they keep much longer than two weeks than the amount he said. They'll keep practically two years as long as they're covered in salt and kept in the refrigerator. And then when, when you buy them, you take them and you wash off the salt, and then you soak them in a bowl of water, oh, for it depends on really how long they've been salted. You have to try one out to see how they taste. These have salt soaked for about 40 minutes. 
And then you take them out. It's a double fork. I think I better put on my glasses. And you want to fillet them, and they're just there's just a bone that goes right through, and the, there's a fillet on each side of the bone. See that comes out very nicely. You can do these with your hands, but you get awfully fishy, so I think it's much better doing it with forks. And this is slightly picky work, as many of these things are, but I think they really have, I love the taste of them, and then you can give them your own flavor. You can put on oregano and other things. And then you just lay them in a little dish, and they're rather fragile. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, um, take them, you shouldn't do them too much ahead of time because the salt, of course, acts as a preservative. And as soon as they're out of their salt, they're out of their preservative. I'll do one, start another one anyway, so you can see. You scrape it along the back side and just to separate it. There. And then after you have done your five anchovies, you want to put a little dressing on them. So I shall put a little on here. And this will give them a very nice flavor. And don't do that much more than about an hour before you're going to serve them. And now the, by this time, the potatoes will have been absorbed most of the liquid. And anything that they haven't absorbed, you can pour off or you can leave in, however you feel. I'll pour a little bit off. And then they're ready to have the dressing on. And they're still fairly warm. And it just has a little dressing on there. And then that gets very gently turned up. And these you can do ahead. You can put them in the refrigerator if you want, because you can, and they're perfectly good the next day. And just, they have a very, very nice taste. And then for the other ingredients, we have string beans. And this, of course, you could do ahead. You could do blanched string beans the, f the French way and refresh them in cold water. And then they're all ready to use for a salad niçoise the next day because they have kept their lovely green color. And, that's, and then we have hard-boiled eggs and tuna and olives and capers and tomatoes. And we're really ready to assemble the salad. Because you see, you can have all of these parts ready. Now, where's my tuna? There's my capers, and there are the olives. So I'm really all ready. So I'm going to start assembling on a large platter. I rather, I like doing this on a platter because I think it's such a pretty arrangement, and I like to see how it looks. And here is the lettuce, which is dried properly. And I think a very important trick in the salad nichoise is to, is to season, what am I do with my salad dressing? There it is. Is to season each item separately. Some people make it, and they make a perfectly beautiful arrangement, and then they pour the dressing over, and then they have to toss it. But I don't think that makes a pretty arrangement, because I think I mean, then you toss it, and then you lose the lovely design. So I think assemble it at the last minute, because you can get everything ready. And I've got the lettuce arranged, so it'll come around at the edge of the dish. And I think it's always important to use colorful arranging tools. Purple and orange, I think, add to the excitement. And these you have to arrange rather carefully, and if you found that a little bit, if this lacks a little bit of dressing, you can sprinkle a little bit more on. And then the next thing, that, and that just stays there, and then you get ready for what your next thing is going to have. We're going to have, we have tomatoes, and we have the potato salad, and I'm going to put the potato salad in the middle. You have to make out a little, a little plan. I have, I have a plan here, which looks so awful I won't show it to you. 
but I'm gonna put the tomatoes in groups around the outside. So I shall make six spaces here. If you don't make some kind of a plan, you could end up without the kind of design you had hoped you might have. So I'm arranging six groups of tomatoes. And then they will have to be also separately dressed, a little tiny bit of salt on each bit. And then a little dressing. And then we have the green beans. And these you do not dress until the last moment. Luckily, I have a little extra dressing left because I knew I was going to have enough. Dressing, I, I like to make dressing also in, in a jar because you can shake it up. Now, we're going to the beans, if you do the, if you season the beans too soon, they can lose their nice fresh color. So I wouldn't, I don't think those should be seasoned any more than about five minutes before you're going to serve them. Those are going to be in four piles. Some, we, when we were in, when we were in Nice, we had some salad niçoises without potatoes, and we had some without beans, and sometimes it varies very much, but I think the classic combination always has the beans and the potatoes. And I've, well, I, I love potatoes, so I always like to have them. Now we have hard-boiled eggs, HB eggs, halved, which I'm going to put well, they will fit in around here. This salad's going to serve about, will serve four to six people. It just depends on how many hard-boiled eggs you like and will fit. And also in that same great market, we found two other parts of the salad niçoise, capers and olives. Yeah. Where do these olives come olive from? Olive de Nice. Olive de Nice. Oui. Lovely little so olives. C'est une spécialité de Nice. This is a special, speciality of Nice. Yes. And they have a special taste. Yes. Very special. Eh bien, je veux, I would like 100 grams of these olives. Yes, right. Yeah. The olives I bought there were very small, but the capers were very big. Oh, a big bucket of capers. C'est merveilleux. Ce sont les capres au vinaigre. Au vinaigre, oui, il y a les capres au vinaigre. Great big capers in vinegar. Bien, j'aimerais bien avoir 100 grammes. 100 grammes, si vous voulez bien. Vous les avez au sel aussi, madame? No, they don't have them in salt, just au vinaigre. J'adore les capres. Mais les gros capres comme ceci, nous n'avons pas chez nous. Ah non, il y a plus petits. petits. Oui, il y a les plus gros encore. Oui. Seulement plus petits. Et les mêmes plus gros que ça. Oh, even bigger ones than that. Bien. 165. 165. These are the same great big capers that they had there in Nice, but they came, these came salted. I got them at our Italian market. And what you do with these, it's the same general thing as what you do with the anchovies. You wash all the salt off and then you soak them. I soak them in, in uh, just in cold water. And then, you, and then you season them with 
with a little vinegar and white wine, and they're absolutely delicious. And we also have olives. I have these are the little tiny olives from Nice. I'm going to put those all around. I think if you if you have an Italian market anywhere near you, you find a lot of these things. And these the Italian the Italian olives are quite a bit like the Nice ones. But the lovely thing about buying the ones there in Nice is that they're they're just, it's just a natural pack, and there's no chemical preservatives in them. And then you have to have tuna fish, which goes right, I'm going to put that right on top there. This is just a very typical, as you can see, that makes just a fine, hearty salad there, and then top it with a little bit of parsley. So there you've got the anchovies, which are over the eggs and the capers, and then you have the tuna in the middle, and you have the potatoes, and you've really got a great salad. And I'll put a little more parsley on like that. And then we're really ready to serve it. And I think that with a, as with any salad like this, you should serve it really just about as soon as it's made, within about, well, five or ten minutes, because otherwise the lettuce would wilt. And this is too beautiful to wilt. There, I'm going to serve you some so you'll see how it looks. There's a nice big piece of lettuce, and two eggs. And you can see the, the real reason for dressing it all, because I think it would be a shame to bring it into the dining room and then toss it all up and mess everything up when you've spent so much time making it look pretty. And with this, all you'd need to serve would be some French bread, and that's all you need for lunch. You just have everything, you have it made, as they say. And there, how, that's, how that looks. And then everybody just adores this. Now, with this you could serve a nice muscadet or a pouilly, or you could serve a rosé de Provence. That would be the wine they would probably serve most in lunch, at, I mean in Nice. Not really, I think this is a perfect luncheon dish. You've got your eggs and your potatoes and your tuna and your anchovies, and it's light but filling, and you really couldn't do better in Nice itself. So that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Julia Child is co-author of Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Volumes 1 and 2.